Welcome back to the Bob Harden Show. And now here's your host, Bob Harden. Thanks so much for joining us here on the show. It's brought to you in part by the good folks at Johnson's Air Conditioning, Naples' longest established air conditioning company, as well as Naples Illustrated, bringing you infinite luxury lifestyles. Visit the website, NaplesIllustrated.com. Coming up, we're going to visit with David Bolduc, associated with Parents Rock, Rock being an acronym for Right of Choice for Kids in the Collier County School System. Right now we have with us Dr. Zudi Jasser. Dr. Jasser is uh, the author of A Battle for the Soul of Islam. He's also the founder and president and CEO of uh, the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. He's a former uh, lieutenant commander in the U.S. Navy as well. Uh, Dr. Jasser, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's great to be with you, Bob. Thank you, Dr. And for our listeners' benefit, can you tell us about A Battle for the Soul of Islam and, and uh, why you wrote the book? Yeah, basically, you know, uh, over half of America has never met a Muslim, and I think there's nothing uh, that uh, is more telling than to really understand how I turned out the way I am, and and also to understand that uh, while my Islam might be different than the Islam of the radicals and the militants, also to understand where Islam is in its history today. So really the battle for the soul of Islam is a battle to reject theocracy, to reject the Sharia state, and I think that the only way to counter that is not only to counter the symptom, which is terrorism and violence, but to advance the ideas of freedom and liberty. And, you know, the only reason I never, I was never radicalized was the only thing I'd ever die for is America. I'd never want to die for an Islamic state, for jihad, or, or any uh, religious concept, because to me, uh, you know, I have my faith, and it's not me to impose that on anyone else. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, that, I think, Islam, if you will, is going through that same process that Christianity went through that ultimately created America, the greatest democracy in the world. And I think once people understand that, they'll realize that, you know, the ISIS's and the Al-Qaeda's of the world don't come out of thin air. They're coming out of Saudi Arabia, out of Iran, out of uh, these dictatorships uh, of Islamic republics. And the Arab awakening is ultimately an opportunity. Yes, there's been vacuums filled now that have made things worse, but at the end of the day, you're never going to see an end to radical Islam until we start to see the end of these dictatorships in the Middle East. That's so interesting. I've read your book, A Battle for the Soul of Islam, and I just want to acknowledge you for the transparency about your own experience of Islam, and uh, it's just a terrific read. Uh, and uh, really, the organization that you founded, again, the name of the book, A Battle for the Soul of Islam, a terrific read. I encourage our listeners to go to Amazon and get a copy of Battle for the Soul of Islam. Also, the is, is American Islamic Forum for Democracy, AIFdemocracy.org. Uh, you founded the organization really to take a stand for and to help us uh, keep, have a voice for the separation of mosque and state. Absolutely. And I think, you know, initially when we formed it in 2003, people were like, what does terrorism have to do with mosques and state? It's really just Al-Qaeda that attacked us. And after 2011, when you had these revolutions and the Islamic State was formed in 2013 in Syria and Iraq, people started to realize, oh, uh, really, you're talking about the establishment of religion. And I think, you know, as Muslims, just you no know, different than Christians or Jews or others, we're not telling, you know, people not to have influence of their faith in their daily life. but the state itself, if it's identified as an Islamic state, then along with it comes blasphemy laws, comes, uh, you know, uh, apostasy laws that prevent the leaving of the faith because uh, you have a loyalty to the state. So tied to an Islamic state identity is the identity of um, to, to prevent sedition, to prevent treason, etc. So you can't reform ideas of sedition and treason as long as an Islamic State exists. And this is my goal. Our goal in the American Islamic Forum is to end the concept of the Islamic State. And, you know, right now, there are 56 countries that form a group, a block vote in the U.N. called the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. It's not a coincidence that the West does not have an organization of Christian cooperation of all the free states. It's NATO. It's, it's uh, secular liberal democracies. And I think this is ultimately should be our policies for the advancement of liberty and freedom. Yeah. So how is the battle for the soul of Islam going? 
I mean, are you make? Do you see progress? Well, we formed the Muslim Reform Movement as of uh, um, December 2015. There's 20 different organizations that have come together uh, from Canada and Toronto and to uh, Denmark and London and Chicago and New York and uh, ours in Phoenix. And our organization actually convened it and brought all these uh, reformists together. So I think, you know, if you're a cup half full kind of person, I think uh, no one would have thought that we'd have this type of movement you know, now when people ask, well, who, you know, is Zudi a mutation? Uh, you know, the answer is like, no, there's these 20 different reformers. And we have a declaration that's two pages that simply that simply puts what what that reform should entail. So that's going well. But if you look at the incidents of terror that have been happening almost on a weekly basis, uh, it's been increasing quite a bit as we continue to squeeze ISIS and Syria and Iraq and and uh, in many ways, our policies have been settling back into the mid 20th century type policies, where we're, we're we're cozying up the dictators because there's no real other option, if you will, for us in in trying to quell the threat of radical Islam. Yeah. So uh, the president gave a speech to uh, the, the in uh, in the Middle East. I think there's 53 or 54 leaders of uh, mainly Muslim countries, and really asked them to be accountable for. Uh, helping to deal with this issue. Was that helpful? And wh- where does the, the Trump administration stand in the cause? Well, that's a great question. I think, you know, in the short term, definitely it's helpful. Uh, uh, the last eight years, uh, the Obama administration basically cozied up to Iran, handed them $150 billion, uh, a sham of a nuclear deal, and abandoned the old uh, Sunni uh, uh, leaders that were our longtime allies in Egypt, Saudi Arabia, uh, the UAE and others. So uh, to renew and reaffirm those relationships that we had in the 20th century and, and remind them that we are with them in the fight against not only ISIS, but in stabilizing them against the threat of Iran, I think was very important. But in the long term, we have to realize that they're not only the firefighters, but they're the arsonists too. So, you know, these governments that claim to be with us against ISIS are spewing ideas and textbooks and imams and clerics that are justifying the existence of laws that create the ISIS of the world. I mean, Saudi Arabia beheaded more people in the last year than ISIS did in in their uh, governmental and judicial system. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're going to have to, you know, so far the Trump administration's policy has basically been no different than most Republican administrations in the last uh, 50 to 100 years. In, in our engagement of the Sunni uh, regimes. I hope we no longer look at the formula in the Middle East that the enemy of our enemy is our friend, and we begin to look at the people of the Middle East. And I think the President, uh, President Trump's speech to the U.N. did do that. I think it began to finally talk. He talked to the people of Iran. He talked to the people of Egypt and the people of Saudi Arabia. And I hope now that 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 type of shift uh, begins to uh, come to fruition in his policy. And Dr. Zudi Jassid, the author of A Battle for the Soul of Islam, I encourage you to read it. It's a terrific read, and uh, you'll get a lot of insight. Also, uh, check out AIFdemocracy.org, the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. Dr. Jasser, always appreciate your commentary here on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Bob. Appreciate it. Always a pleasure, doctor.